Today's video is kindly sponsored by Simply Safe. Over the past month on the channel, we've been working on the main living room space in my 1929 Spanish home, and we started off by removing the fireplace mantle to reveal the architect's original idea for this fireplace, then painted that, retextured the front of it, painted the entire living room old white by Faro and Ball, and found a pair of 100-year-old stained glass doors that I installed myself with these incredible handles to create the perfect focal point in the living room. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are working on the bookcases and getting them done. The living room built-ins, I'm hoping you're gonna be done at the end of this video. I'm just starting the process right now. As you can see, our bookcases are just kind of set up here. We went to Lowe's this morning and got a bunch of supplies for the bookcases because I needed to get some actual pre-primed melamine that we could retrim the entire bookcase out in. I'm doing a shelf above the door. It's gonna be a whole situation. So I kind of just wanna dive on in because we have quite a bit to do. The built-in wall really is gonna be so focal because it has our stained glass doors on it. It's also gonna be an area where we can style a bunch of items. I don't wanna over style it or make it look cluttered at all. I just wanna have like surface spaces where I could put things and like, you know, my antique finds and my thrifted goods that I always look for. So I think it's gonna be fun, but let's get started. I have an idea that's probably crazy, um, like all of them, but I love these. Like, I just love these little circle medallion thingies, and I actually use these on a lot of the window trim, and I also have them in my house on a lot of the doors and trim. I was thinking of using this as kind of like a spaced out trim on the top of the bookcases. Like, if we were to space them out every other, and it kind of creates this, like, jaggedy peaky situation, which I'll pop up my inspo photo up from Pinterest, but I've always loved the cut of this trim. <sighs> it's all weird. It's interesting. It's cool. I love it so much. I think it's interesting. If it's all painted, it's gonna look perfect. So I just did a little test, and that is kind of what I was thinking for the top of the bookcases, because we have this vault here, and I don't want to take away from the vault because it's original, and I just don't want to use like a simple piece of trim that makes this look like a perfectly straight line. I want to make it feel almost a bit more connected to this vault. So I thought having like an interesting trim like this that almost connects the two and doesn't starkly cut the top of these bookcases off would be nice. So that's why this idea popped in my head, and I'm really liking the direction so far, but we will see as we add more. So what we're doing is taking our fun Amazon contraption I shared in the last video, adding some tape to this. We're gonna plug it into the wall and then push our bookcase up against it. So hopefully the tape will transfer. There's a hole in the wall. Oh no, the hole's gone. I actually ended up just quickly trimming this hole out here. So this was some paint sticks and I just cut them down, added it on the outside. So once this is all painted, it'll look a little bit cleaner once it's pressed against the wall. And to secure bookcases to the wall, I just screwed through the side or drilled through the side and then used these two and a half inch masonry screws because the exterior wall of my house is actually concrete, which is crazy. And then I used the Ikea, like the top mounting brackets because you can see how wobbly the Billy bookcases are. They really are very narrow. So if you don't use these top mounting brackets, they are honestly gonna fall over. This is our stability test. Oh, that structure. Imagine I ripped it off.
Good morning, I am about to head to Lowe's to pick up the rest of the trim, the rest of the supplies for these bookcases. Um, I ended up picking up some of those rosettes yesterday that you guys saw and I love the idea of putting them across the entire top. I'm gonna be needing some one by two pre-primed trim pieces. Those are what I'm gonna be trimming the entire front of the bookcase out in and then something decorative for the bottom. But let's go grab those and then we can get back here and start trimming out the bookcase. Of course, before heading out, I'm going to arm my Simply Safe. I am so excited to get this nice and painted so that this looks even better because something I love about Simply Safe is just how sleek the entire system is. So whenever I'm home, I have it on home, and then whenever I leave, I just click away, and then we can leave. And it really is that easy. Not only is it super easy to arm your security system, it is also extremely easy to order your own security system. Simply Safe has such a modernized and simple and effective way to have home security done at your home. Like it is so simple to set the system up, you guys. That's what I love about it is right out of the box, it gets shipped to your door. You can have this up and running in an hour and you do not need to be technologically advanced at all. Everything pairs up so nicely, connects to your Wi-Fi, and it's honestly kind of fun adding all the different attachments around your home and knowing that every door and every window or every corner that you want a camera in has coverage by Simply Safe. And for less than a dollar a day, that is half the cost of traditional home security brands with no long-term contracts so you can start and stop at any time with no hidden fees, which is powered by Fast Protect technology exclusive to Simply Safe. And I also feel like summer is a great month to start taking advantage. I know we're in spring, but summer is quickly approaching. And in the summer months, we're awake from our houses quite a bit more. Like we're out at pool parties, at the pool, whatever it might be, summer activities normally take us away from home. So make sure that you are safe by heading to simplysafe.com slash lonefox and you're going to get 20% off plus your first month free when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan because there's no safe like Simply Safe. A quick Starbucks break. I want to know though, guys, have any of you tried this Olido thing? Like that um, olive oil drink? It sounds sick, honestly. Now this is where the magic happens for our built-ins because we are using the Billy bookcase bases. So re-trimming them out is what's going to give it a very built-in and expensive high-end look. It really takes away that Ikea kind of quality about the piece. And that's because the shelves on all the Ikea Billy bookcases are really, really thin. I'm actually going to be using some one by two trim to be covering up all of those areas. Just using my brad nailer, I'm just nailing them right over the top. And then I'm also using some like different baseboards and different specialty trim pieces as well, such as this piece of molding here, which I loved because it kind of has that um, fluted detail to it, but I placed it over the top of just a plain one by four, which kind of made it look like a thicker baseboard. And I'm re-trimming the fronts of every single shelf, every single edge where the bookcases meet up, just everything with one by two pre-primed boards. That way when we go to paint everything, it's nice and clean and just ready to be painted. bookcases have a billion holes down the side and that's so you can adjust the shelves but it gives very much Ikea we don't want that so I'm grabbing some wood filler and then just like a putty knife and I'm going to be filling all of these holes and I'm literally just like spackling it on scraping away the excess So I want the trim on the front of the shelves to be flush with the trim that we added to the vertical sections. However, the shelves, as you can see, kind of sit a bit back from this. So I'm actually just using paint sticks and then we're nailing the paint sticks down first and then over top adding the trim. So really on the underside, it kind of looks something like this, which of course will never be seen because um, it's gonna be on the underside, but that's how I'm creating that space. So think about or consider using paint sticks.
For everyone commenting on this exposed shelf, it's about to be covered up. That's why I haven't fixed it. <laughs> Look how pretty the bookcase looks all trimmed out. So we added the so we added the trim pieces. As you can see, it makes it just look a lot chunkier and more substantial. It doesn't look as IKEA. We're gonna trim out this side and add the border on the top, and then we could start priming. You can see these ones are horizontally trimmed, and these ones are not. And these ones already have the verticals done but it just makes it look so much nicer. And then the slanted shelf, we're adding a little metal rail to the front of each of these shelves, which is why I didn't add a new facing on the front. So that's gonna be going all the way across. Look at the trim and the little rosettes on the top. It only took me like 10 minutes to space those. I thought it was gonna take me like three hours to properly do that. Super quick and easy and I love the way that it looks. And I feel like the rosettes kind of tie in with the original rosettes that are on the doors throughout the home. And then also, it just kind of creates not a straight line. The straight line before I wasn't loving. I like how this is jagged and it just kind of leaves your eye wandering up into the vault as well. It's sanding day. There's lots of sanding happening and I'm going to be wearing a mask. Don't you guys worry. Let's get started. And I'd say this is probably one of the most important steps of converting your Billy bookcases into really nice built-ins. And that is filling in every single seam where your new trim meets up. Just filling in every single seam and every single little hole on that Billy bookcase and then sanding it down so it's nice and smooth. That way when you go in with your paint over the top, it looks flush, it looks seamless, it looks like it was custom added to your space. And this is really what's going to give you that finished look. All the sanding is done and it is time to start priming. So I'm gonna be using the Ben shellac based primer. This is a Zinzer primer. And I accidentally like already poured it out and covered up the logo, but I use this on any Ikea pieces. So anything that's kind of like that slick laminate, this just allows any paint to really stick to it. So we're gonna do a coat of this and then we can actually get into the paint. Look how good it looks with one coat of primer. You cannot even see any of the holes at all. And we're still doing two coats of paint over the top of this, so looks incredible. And just look at how much better these look than Ikea. Like, oh, so pretty and good. And then the trim across the top. And then we're gonna start painting. Same color as the walls, we have the bookcases primed. Should I do it like right here? It really is crazy how much darker of a color it is, but on the walls it looks so good.
it was finally time to start removing and just taking away some of the prep work. So all of the tools that we had out, all the paper on the ground, the tape on everything. I was so excited to see these bookcases finally revealed. This has been one of my favorite projects that I've ever worked on. So it was so much fun seeing these just like in their true form. was at Lowe's I also picked up a couple of these fence posts that I'm actually going to be turning into a little step in front of the door because currently the doors actually sit about eight inches off the ground and that's because I believe this used to be a window that the previous owners or at some point in this home's history was converted into the doors that you guys saw before the current ones and then I transitioned them into these more vintage style stained glass doors which I love for the era of this home but I wanted to create like this little step up to the door so they felt a little more intentional so I got two of these wooden fence posts that actually just match the color of the trim perfectly and I just added those in cut them down to size and they fit absolutely perfect and then I retrimmed out the front just to make it look nice and cohesive so this is a little step that we created up to the door just using some I don't even know what these are they're honestly like smaller railroad ties What are you doing? Giving the floor a washing. A washing? A washing with this nice um, mop. Then, and here we go, for a little dip and rinse, and then to strain all the water out. The bookcases are done. The bookcases are done, you guys. I am so excited to share these with you. This has been such a fun process and I hope that you love them. And for anybody that didn't want me to do the bookcases, I hope this changed your mind because I love them so much. But this is what they look like. They are a little bit hard to share just because whenever I film this direction because of the stained glass window, it's super backlit. And I've seen a bunch of comments being like, you made the room so much darker. But I promise you guys, if I film this direction, like if I was shooting this way, it is so, so bright in here. It's just whenever I shoot this way, uh, the camera can't adjust properly and it just looks a lot darker. So it looks freaking incredible in here. I absolutely love it. I love the trim on the top. I love this. We can open the doors. We added a little step right here as well. Um, and all the lights. One, two, three. Did you see that? Some lights. Justin actually clicked it behind the camera, but um, <laughs> I'm getting ready to put my chairs in place in front of the bookcases, which I have been waiting to see because not only are the chairs going in place, I actually had the cushions reupholstered because if you guys remember, I got these chairs at Revival Antiques a couple months back and they actually were my largest antique or vintage investment I have ever made. I absolutely love Monterey style furniture, but Monterey style furniture was only created for about 10 to 20 years from like the 20s to the 40s and it was more so created for the celebrities of that era. This type of furniture was custom made for people that had more money during this time period and I just love the style of this furniture. So there really isn't a ton of pieces of Monterey around the world and it's actually kind of hard to find like a set of club chairs or a set of chairs. So when Marie from Revival told me she had a set of them and she had not had a set in the last 30 years, I said I need them, I need them now and I got them because I love the shape of these chairs. Let me share with you guys what they look like over here. I'm thinking one's gonna go like here-ish. I was picturing kind of going here. What do we think, guys? What do we think? Oh, it looks so good. My upholstery guy did such an incredible job on these cushions. Look at these, you guys. These are like a golden chenille. I actually found this fabric at FNS Fabrics, the fabric store I always go to in Los Angeles. And it was a great price too. It was like $20 a yard. And he did the piping on the edges and it is so beautiful. It's like an ambery golden chenille fabric. Like so, so pretty. And I love the piping detail. 